Link to SQL is a feature built into Visual Studio which allows you to generate classes out of a SQL Server database. So instead of querying the database with brittle SQL statements, which we have been doing for years and years and years, you query strongly typed objects with link, which is great because any data type conversion errors that may exist, you'll catch at compile time instead of runtime. So let me show you how to do this. So what we're going to do is create a WPF application. And we're going to first create an SQL Server database, which you can do within Visual Studio. We're going to add a table to it. We're going to add some data to it. And then from the code, we're going to access that data. And you'll see how we can access it via link. We don't have to use any SQL at all. And we're going to display that data in a WPF application. So let's first set up our database. Go ahead and right click on your project and say new folder and make an app data folder. Inside the app data folder, add a new item and you want to add a service-based database which is an SQL Server database for desktop applications, and it is an MDF file. There's another kind of database called Local Database that you don't want to choose. It's a SQL Server Compact Edition, but you would use that, for instance, for mobile devices. But go ahead and click on Service-Based Database and change this to your name, for instance, Main, and Enter. And this database, if you just click the Next, Next, Finish, will be created in your app data where you can access it in your application. Now, go ahead and let's create a table in our database. We'll right-click, and you don't want to right-click here because we are in the Solution Explorer. Instead, you want to go into the Database Explorer, and there you will see your database again. Go ahead and open it, and you'll see one of the subdirectories is Tables. Right-click on that and Add New Table. So we're going to add three fields, ID, first name, last name. ID is an integer. I'm doing tabs here. First name is a varchar50, which is basically a string. And last name is a varchar50, which is a string of 50 characters. And then we want to make the ID auto increment and primary key. So right click on this arrow and set primary key. And then while it's still selected, Move down in the column properties to identity specification, open that up, and double click over here for is identity, which will change it to yes. And then you can go ahead and just close it. Yes, and call that customers. Enter. So now in our database, we have a table named customers with those three fields. Now we need to add some data to this database. So right click on the table and say open or show table data. And here, since the ID will be auto incremented, we can start with first name. We'll type a name in here, tab, tab, and you see that the ID is now one, so that's working. John Ashton, tab, tab, Sue Allard, tab, tab. So we, now we have three records we can just save here, and they are saved in our database. Then go back into the Solution Explorer so that we can access this database from our code. And we'll do that in the main XAML CS file. So double click on that, and we'll put the code to do that here in the main window. Before we access our data, we have to create the classes that we access with link. We have to create the link to SQL classes, or our model classes. Therefore, we have to make a new folder in our project. We'll call it models. And in this folder, we're going to put the link to SQL classes, which we will access directly from code. So go ahead and right click on that, add new item. And then you'll see here link to SQL classes. Go ahead and change that to main as well and enter. And that will create a main DBML. After that has been created, go down into your database explorer and drag all the tables all at once that you want to be in your model to the object relational designer that was created by link to SQL and drop them. Here we only have one table, so only one class was created for us. And you see it has all of the names of the fields in our table. So the field names in the table have become the property names in the class.
And so now we are ready to access our data. Go ahead and close all of these. And in your main window XAML CS, in the main window constructor, we're going to access our data. The way you do that is type main, which is the name that we gave our model. And after you type main, then it's always data context. That's the suffix that's added. You'll see here some IntelliSense, and it's telling you that it found it in models. Just go ahead and click that, and it'll add the using, so you can use main data context. And this is our database from our perspective. New main data context. So that's all we need there. And then let's get our customers. So we can do this with link from C in DB customers, select C. So now we have an I enumerable that we can for each through and display our customers. And before I do that, I'm going to add in our XAML a, let's do a stack panel so that we can add the customers as we go through them in the loop. So the main element here will be a stack panel. That's the main one, so we'll give it a margin. And inside there, another stack panel, because we're just going to be adding text blocks to it. And we'll call it customer list. and create a text block for each one. And in that text block, we'll pick the data out of the I enumerable that we got via link, via the link to SQL classes, via the database. So let's format it like this, last name, comma, first name, and in parentheses, the ID. So now it needs its data. Oops, not last name, but customer. Last name, customer, first name, and customer ID. There we have it. So the text block has been created. Now let's just add it to the uh, customer list. Children add it. TV. So it's pulling the data out of the classes out of our model and adding them to the view. So if we run this, we do indeed see the three records that we typed into the database table. Now let me show you how this whole idea of the easy data access with link fits together with WPF. What we're going to do now is make a more sophisticated display of the data, but you'll see that the data is still, let's see in our code here, the data is still gotten in the same way. We just will take this out, where we just made simple text boxes and displayed them in the view. Now what we're going to do is say, well, let's do the XAML first. I prepared a page of XAML here. I did this with expression blend, actually, which allows you to do nice designs visually and then just copy the XAML. So I'll copy this in. Uh, you can see it being displayed here. Here's the background. Basically what we have, we have the main part. Okay, here's our window, window resources. Let's close that for now. The main part, before we had a stack panel as the main root element. Now we have a scroll viewer and inside that a doc panel, which fills the whole area. That's why you see all of this is gray here. And then this is going to be a list view, basically a list that the user can select. And it's just saying that its name is customer list, and that's what we're going to access in the code behind. And it has this uh, template, which I'll show above. This is the background, the gray background that you see here. And so inside that, we simply have the customer list, which has a template called show customer. And this is defined here as a data template and we're binding the field names or the property names of our objects that we're getting from link to sql which are represented by the fields in the database so you have the database going to link to sql classes going to this binding done up here in the view and that's the three tier idea of w 
PF, keeping everything separate. So you could change the design totally here, which you'll see in a minute, but basically the way you get your data is still the same. So now that we have the XAML and we have our customers, we only need one line here to connect everything up. And that is customer list, which is what we defined in the XAML. Item source. And the item source is simply this I enumerable customers. And that's it. So now when we run it, we see a very different representation of our data. So the idea is that the developers spend their time getting the data from the database via link to SQL into these I enumerable collections. And once it's there, then the designers can use expression blend and create this XAML to display the data any way they want. So in this lesson, you saw step-by-step -step how to set up a database in a WPF application, how to create a link to SQL data model from it, how to use link to query the data into an I enumerable collection, and how to bind this collection to XAML to produce a nicely designed representation of the data.